Hello, welcome back to another multiplayer battle featuring a one versus one where I'm playing the vampire counts and I'm fighting the empire. I've got a new build to show you called the scary Terry terror build and I'll go over that in just a moment. I want to go over what my foe has way over here. We're looking at two outriders that have grenade launchers. We're looking at a hellstorm rocket battery, one steam tank, Knights of the Blazing Sun over here. We've got four swordsmen, two halberds, and two flagellants in the front. Then over here, we're looking at Gelt, one amber wizard, and then another one. Okay, two of them. Then for me, I have a Strigoi Ghoul King on a Terror Guy, so I've got one Vampiris on a Hell Steed. I've got two zombies and one regiment of renowned zombie group called the Tithe. I've got two Skeletal Spearmen, three Karn Wraiths, one Graveguard group for the Sternsmen. Then I've got two Fell Bats, three Cryptors, one Vargulf, and one Claw of Nagash, a Mortis engine over here. And that is my build. Currently, I'm moving my bats over to the little cliffside over here. And I'm beginning to move up. If you look at it, though, I've got Outriders beginning to charge forward. I'm not too sure why. You can't really use them alone. Fell bats are very important to me. I like to use them to actually catch my foes, to entangle them in battle. I mean, they're really meant to catch your foe and keep them busy while you're bringing in your big guns to actually tear them up. That is what I'm doing here. The Outriders are beginning to move up, which will allow me to catch them and then destroy them with my leaders and my fell bats way back over here they might be able to shoot at me but I mean when I go fight them in battle I'm gonna be able to freak out a lot of them here we go right now they begin to charge forward and immediately we caught them and now that they're caught they're in big trouble they're not gonna get very far not too many have died but they're terrified in the very beginning they're all alone and surrounded I'm beginning to move up my plan right now is to move way up here on their flank then to hopefully catch him. I could move to the very front. Now, I want every Kratora to go after that steam tank. If I can do that, I can use armor piercing to actually destroy it, hopefully quickly. I'm going to let my fell bats for a time go after every group of outriders as they begin to flee. I don't need to worry about them anymore. My leaders are now beginning to move ahead again. I'm beginning to become better at micromanagement, and I really enjoy it. I'm trying to figure out builds for every faction where I can. I do love the Claw of Nagash. It's very powerful. It's able to maneuver around. It's able to regenerate your own forces and its own device. And I really find it a very well-rounded addition to any army. For a top tier unit for the undead, it's very good. I have my Vargulf in a separate group. And here, what I'm doing is called the Toke Maneuver. It means I'm going to strafe side to side, trying to dodge any steam tank firing or even artillery fire. If they try to shoot my leaders, I can easily dodge it back and forth like that. When you're flying, it's a little bit easier. And a Vargulf is pretty quick, too. If you look at it, they can't hit me yet. But they're trying to. I'm moving back and forth using shift commands, and I'm currently moving my army up. I want to get into position. I might lose a few more, but they have no guns or crossbows to shoot me up, which means I'm not as worried. They might kill a few cheap units, but I don't really care. And over here, we're still chasing a few outriders way over here. No kills for that group. Over here, no kills again. They pretty much had to waste their gold to keep together. And here I am moving my Cryptors again. Usually a rocket battery can be pretty handy, but here the damage output cannot be enough. I mean, sure, nearly 100 kills, but a very cheap things. Things I don't need to really worry about. Now he'll probably shoot over here in the middle. I'm using a lot of terror here. I've got ethereal units in the very middle. I've got terror that they can cause. I've got a terror guys for more terror. I've got a claw of Nagash. Again, more terror. Then I've got my armor piercing Vargo for flanking, and then Cryptors for more armor piercing and flanking. They're using a bit of magic, and that does damage, sure. I do believe that. We're getting ready, though. Again, I want my zombies to be closer. That way, I'll be able to have them entangle the flagellants who are currently not moving right now. It may be a bit of a pain, but it's going to work out. Okay, fell bats are coming back. I'm going to use them to entangle my enemies again. If we look at it, I'm actually not the one outnumbered. This is good. Alright, I have my Sternsman and my Skeleton Spearman now moving over to their left flank. I've got my Cryptors now moving in. We're all going towards one Steam Tank. I'm not too worried about their Halberds. I mean, they should be entangled. I've got my leader waiting for now. I've got my Karn Race now charging in. I couldn't wait anymore. I, I wanted to charge in immediately to go kill the Flagellants. And now I have my zombies moving in too to go keep them entangled. You go look at that right now. We're doing a lot of damage to that one steam tank. 
and I'm using my terror guys to now freak them out. I'm hoping to actually break their halberds and everything over here on the left flank. Eventually, I should use Doom and Darkness to actually destroy their leadership. The Claw of Nagash is beginning to move even further. I'm going to go into slow motion. We can look at what's happening right now. I've got my Felbats going after that artillery crew. Knights of the Blazing Sun are beginning to move over here, and they might catch me, but I'll use Spearmen to bind them. I'll use my Claw of Nagash to attack them and hurt them even further. I'm fighting their front lines where they're not very capable on their front lines. They're not going to be able to do a lot. I'm moving in my Vampire. And if you go look at it, I did use Doom and Darkness upgraded. Now they pretty much have no leadership. It's beginning to go away. If we go look at it right now, they're going to fall apart. They're not doing very well. And over here, they have their leaders, but they're really not trying to do too much. They do have two Feral Manticores, but for my build, that won't help out a lot. They would have to kill my leader quickly. Could they do that? Maybe, if they really tried. But they would have to really try. Onto the Blazing Sun are moving in. Look at it over here. Kratoras are now bashing them completely. Here's where they can't get very far. He forgot all about his Outriders way over here. I didn't fully kill them or make them flee off the battlefield, but they are pretty much done for. Over here, Knights of the Blazing Sun are getting a few kills, but they really cannot do very much. I'm using my Bar Gulf to get around, where I'll let it flank them again. I believe they had a bit of friendly fire. Yeah, they are. They're having some friendly fire from behind, trying to shoot me. That's pretty funny. My Kratoras broke their right flank. And we're going after their steam tanks. And I believe I brought one in from my Terror Geist leader, my Shigoi Ghoul King. Now they're bringing in Feral Manticores trying to fight me. But again, that is not going to help them out very much. The Karn Rays are destroying their Flagellants, who will not get very far. We've got armor, armor piercing and ethereal, you know, damage resistance to keep my guys alive. The Knights of Blazing Sun are beginning to flee. They're not shattered, but they are fleeing. I'm now moving my Vargulf again and my Claw of Nagash. Again, I have them in their own group. I don't use them directly with my army. Over here, again, Doom and Darkness. Now they're freaking out. They're terrified. They're going to be leaving so I can kill them. And here comes my Vampiris again. And a Claw of Nagash trucking on through, being all metal-like. I kept them busy in the middle, and on the flanks, I completely destroyed them. I had a lot more to really use in the battle. The build was just not one meant to fight what I had here. A very mobile force able to mitigate any damage that their artillery could do. Here comes my Vargulf now, fighting their crew. I don't think we actually need that to be locked down. Let's just watch the battle. The Claw of Nagash, again, very mobile. Look at how I'm using it all over the battlefield. They can't do anything about that. They have nothing to stop me right now. No more Steam Tank. I mean, a Steam Tank I'm actually not a fan of. It can be okay, but it's really not cheap, and you want it to cause terror to your foes. But unfortunately, I can't really deal with that. I don't have to deal with it at all. Terror does not affect me. I don't have a leadership problem like that. Swordsmen are still here. We've killed a majority of their men now. They're holding on somehow. I don't even know how. The Knights of Legends are coming back in. But in my Spearmen, who are very cheap. And who have killed quite a few for being very cheap. Sternsmen are fighting. If you look at it right now, they have nearly 400 men. They're using an ability called Transportation of Lead on my Karn Race. And sure, that might do some damage. But I'm really not too sure what they're trying to gain with that. The Praetorians are taking a lot of damage right now. They're fighting their leaders too. They're all over here fighting me. Here's Gel. He's got 19 kills, but I have my mixture of Kratoras now beating them all. I'm bringing in more men to go fight them. My Vargulf is very mobile. I've learned how to use that pretty well, too. You've got to use it as a mobile blinking tool all the time. If he's not charging, if your Fluffy's not charging, he's not doing a great job. You need him to charge all the time. Here, I'm having him charge right now. And he went right through the group. He killed a lot of them, and now they're terrified, and now they're fleeing. Which means I have one less group to deal with. And the battle's about to be over in just a moment. We didn't really lose a lot. A lot of cheap things, but... After that, yeah, we didn't really lose a lot. The battle's about to be over. I don't know who's actually left right now. Who dares to remain today? Ah, they do, yeah. These guys love to prolong a battle. They know Oh, wow! Pecked right from behind. That was a beautiful way to end a bite. What a way to go.
We lost over 500. They lost over 800. Knights of the Blazing Sun got quite a few kills. Their artillery, sure. Steam tank was not even worthwhile to bring. I mean, bringing that many wizards is really not a good idea. You wouldn't have the winds of magic to actually support them all. He did use a lot, though. A lot more than I thought he would be able to. But maybe we all get a little bit more magic power to use in each battle. Maybe. I don't actually know. But if you look at that... His melee didn't get very far. He probably killed a lot of cheap units, which he did, like my fell bats. I mean, that's quite a few kills right there. He killed quite a few zombies. And after that, my elite units are fine. Look at how healed up they all are. One Kratora group, a little bit damaged, and over here. But after that, they all began to heal up. Invocation of Nehek, you've got regeneration, a lot of that going on. We do have a regeneration cap, but it doesn't really affect me too much for a short-term battle. For a long battle, then maybe sure. But that worked out pretty well. Anyway, that is my Scary Terry Terror build. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to leave a like down below. And if you look forward to more, well, let me know. Thank you for watching. And as always, until then.